This is the first attempt at making a coffee pot out of a batch stove Heineken pot replacement. What we have here is we have a mini bull design um, stove. That's the bongo, old one. And we have on top of that we have the batch stoves pot, 22 ounce pot, aluminum pot, which I I call the Heineken replacement because it is as light and as nice as a Heineken pot. On top here we have the oops. On top here we have a lip guard that I created. Uh, this is a extra wide lip guard um, made from a Joey, I think that is pronounced J O I E J O I E egg silicone egg. Uh, I don't know, like muffin maker, so it makes a perfectly round egg by putting it in the skillet. And I use that as a lip guard. And then on top, we have our percolator lid. Um, I've switched out the lid that came with the pot. I'm keeping that one. It's hard to hold this thing. I'm trying a different camera here. I'm keeping the lid that came with it and using that, but I haven't, I didn't want to cut a giant size hole in this one here unless this worked. So that's why I haven't done anything with it yet. So I had a old coffee pot lid, percolator lid, that I'm using. So in this test, I'm going to turn the light back on so we can have some good light here. There we go. Maybe too much light. No, it's much better now. See? Okay. So in this test, I'm taking the old style Heineken coffee pot that I was making. And since we can no longer get the Heineken, as you can see, I'm going to try and step right here and grab this and show you. <clears throat> about the same size. Holds about the same water. This is uh, the replacement to the Heineken pot. Um, you can get these at batch stoves. Uh, and not a percolator as of yet, but definitely a pot that you can use to make a percolator out of. And what I have done is I've, I've tried a few things. I've... Um, I tried a water bottle. You can see that's a water bottle, a steel, a stainless steel water bottle to make a percolator out of. And it was okay. Um, I had taken a whole percolator basically and used that for this one. So I had an old percolator, used the inner parts of that, and put the basket in there and found a lid from another device that fit in there. So that worked out well. You can see I've been playing around. I've got percolator parts all over the place here. Just trying to figure out what works best and what I can use. Um, <clears throat> that one was heavy and stainless steel and I didn't like it. I have my old percolator I think you've seen in a few old videos. With the pot and everything. And I think this was really the way to go was a percolator pot like this with a lid. And this lid actually fit on there as well. But I didn't want to take the lid from my percolator there. So I found another one um, at a Goodwill, another lid, and it fit perfectly right inside of Sam's pot. So I went ahead and grabbed that. Let me check my flame. It's still good. I went ahead and grabbed that and it fit just as well as the lid that Sam had given me from Batch Stokes. So before I started experimenting with his lid and seeing what I needed to do, I went ahead and did this lid here since it was already fit in there. So right now we're testing. I've built a percolator inside of this. Uh, I don't have any coffee in here at this point. I just have... I thought maybe it popped up, but it was a little loose there. It hasn't started percolating yet. Yeah. It's not a perfect fit. It's not as good a fit as what comes with these patch stoves. So we'll see. This is uh, just been turned on when I turn the camera on here. We haven't got a heat yet. Um, the one I have... Is a little heavier than the ones he sells today. This was one of the original production ones. They're exactly the same size, but the weight on them has come down considerably since this, this one was ran. He said this was a, one of his first production ones that he gave me to work with until I could come up with something. So if I get this to work, I'll probably have to get another one that's a little lighter so I can get a good weight for you guys. And I'll, uh, 
I'll buy another one because I definitely like the idea of replacing the Heineken since they don't make that anymore with this pot here because it's solid. I mean, you can squeeze the outside. It's, can't, it's probably getting hot now. I gotta be careful. Yeah, it's too hot to grab there. I can grab it up here. But it is solid. There is no way this thing's getting crushed in your pack. Uh, and this, you know, these were solid, but, you know, they they had some give to them, even though they were nice. And the foster cans are, you know, what they are. They, they'll collapse if you don't get if you don't get a ring in there and everything else, they'll collapse for sure. So I'm going to see if I need to add any fuel to this. Just get it towards nice and glistening there. Yeah. Let that continue on. We're going to let that go for a little bit and see if it starts to percolate. But I've been working on this for a little bit. We had a bit of a tornado here in my town and uh, been cutting up trees for, I don't know, week and a half, two weeks, cutting up trees and bushes that have been hit by a tornado. I lost my shed, completely destroyed. I'll have to get you guys a picture of that so you can see how bad it was. Uh, tree landed right on top of it. It's not completely to the ground, but it'll have to be replaced. Uh, we lost our fence. Dogs don't like that because now they have to be on a leash until I can get the fence replaced. So, but <clears throat> that's a little bit of why I haven't been doing any videos just recently. This was my next video I wanted to get involved in here. I wanted to work on this for Sam and see what I could get this. And I, I think I've got it pretty good. I'll show you the percolator parts when I'm done testing. This is my first test run. I haven't even seen if it works yet. Um, so we'll see. And like I said, this is a little heavier than the ones he's selling now. So they're just as sturdy, he says, but they're a little lighter. So they may boil a little quicker. I don't know compared to this one here as with the thick metal that it is. Another thing I've been working on, I'm just going to swing over here and show you. I started putting together a couple of stoves. As you can see, all of these are stoves here. I think there's 13, and I'll pull one down and set it down here for you guys to see. I know you're saying, why aren't you using that instead of the uh, mini bull design stove? Well, there's a reason for that, and I'll explain it in a second. I built a bunch of these stoves, and... Um, I got 13 of them done, and this is the same stove I've used, I've shown in a couple older videos. It's my uh, magnetic base stove, um, flagpole, and a uh, washer in here that's JB welded on, with a nipple on the pipe, on the pipe, and a nipple on the, it's hard to work these iPads. A nipple on the bottle here and this I went cheap on these I didn't make them real expensive I was trying to find a cheap way to make some of this stuff and get a little cheaper uh, get some of it done uh, I went to Harbor Freight the other day and they had a sale on their magnet hook set um, and these make great bases for the uh, stove that I'm making there that centerpiece pops right out you just put a nail punch in there and pops right out. So it makes a great base for that. But the reason I'm not using this on this right now is because I'm taking all of these and I'm thinking about not selling them. I'm not really into selling stuff. I don't want to start that. I don't want to open up a website and start selling stuff. I don't find much fun in that. Uh, the money I put into them probably was more than I could sell them for just because of the fact that um, I spend a lot of money on stupid stuff to get them done. I don't know. They're just, it's not worth selling them. I don't think I can make money back off of them. But what I was thinking about doing was, since I have so many of them, I thought it'd be awesome to do a stove trade. Think about that. I have 13 of these. I could make a trade with 13 different people and then have 13 new somebody else's idea for a stove. So... I thought of this today because I was watching YouTube and a guy by the name of Trailhound made a stove that just blew me away. It was awesome. It was a Coke bottle stove, back to the original Coke bottle design. Uh, it had that, that sexy Coke bottle look, but it was an aluminum bottle. And he thought, you know, he'd make a cool stove out of it. And he did. He made a very cool stove out of it. And man, it just blew me away. And I was like, I'd love to have something like that, but he doesn't sell his stoves. He just makes them for fun, I think. And for the most part. He may sell a few of them. 
So I thought, if he's not into making money off it, he's just doing it for fun, and I'm not into making money off it, I'm just doing it for fun, maybe we could start something with all the stove guys out there. Not the guys that are out there trying to make them for money, and I understand that, it's, that's fine. You've got a business idea, and you're making stoves like, for example, Mini Bull Design. Absolutely, keep it up, I love that. We'll buy your stove forever. But this is, I'm talking to the guys that are making their own stoves. And if one of the guys who sells them wants to do it as well, by all means, jump in. But this is, my idea here is a stove trade. You, straight, you trade one of your stoves you've made for one of the stoves I've made. And the first person I'm asking, or I'm going to bring this up to, is Trailhound. I love that stove you just made. You make one of those for me, and I'll send you this in the mail. You get it in the mail. I'll send this to you in the mail. If you want one, if you don't, not a big deal. We don't have to make a trade. I'll send you one of my stoves in the mail. When you get the box, you turn around and send one back to me of one you made. It doesn't have to be that Coke bottle one. I was That's what got the idea going. But, I'm just saying, that's why I got my idea going. You send something back you made to me. And I'll keep it going. I'll send another one out to somebody else. And then I'll get another one back. And my collection will expand. And maybe Trailhound will start doing something like this. And we'll have all kinds of stove trades going on. Could be a cool idea. Anyways, I noticed that as I'm talking here, the percolation is going on, and crazy idea here. I did this, but I didn't put any coffee in it because I didn't know if it was going to work anyway. So there's no coffee in this one. It's just percolating away with no coffee, and the flame's starting to die down here. So I'm going to kick it up just to see. I want to see if it's going to boil over on me. That was one of my big concerns: is that without the slot slots in the lid on this, no slits in the lid like like you see on no slits in the lid like you see on this one over here. I thought it might boil over, so I kind of watching that and wanted to keep it going for a little bit here. But it's percolating. And as I mentioned, there's not going to be any, not going to be any uh, brown because I didn't put any coffee in there yet. It's working beautifully though. Look at that. That's awesome. I'm excited. Now I'm going to have to blow it out, go get some coffee, and try again. I'll let it percolate for the six minutes here to make sure it's going to make it the whole way, and then I'll take it apart and show you the parts inside too. That's awesome. I'm excited. Sam, I'm really excited. I like this. I like this. This is going to be cool. We haven't boiled over yet. I really thought we might start boiling over. Oh, here we got a little bit of boiling out the top here. A little drip coming out the top. So we may need those little, uh, yeah, there we go. May need those little slots in here after all. To keep it from percolating out the top too much. Yep, there it goes. I knew once I got it going, it would do that a little bit if I got too much pressure in there. So I'm going to need to put a little few little slots in the top of this to release some of that excess pressure. Otherwise it's going to just all pump out the top. As you can see it's doing, making a mess on my table. Spoke too soon, didn't I? But this was just our first test. So we'll get it. So you definitely need additional hole or something in the lid here to let the pressure come down. Or if I had, if I had done it with this, at this point the lid would have just started jumping up and down. And it just would have came out the sides. Okay, well that's not too bad. There's room to work with that. We got the percolation going. So that was good. And it wasn't too long. I think it was like seven or eight minutes. And I got about two cups in there. Not anymore. It's all on the table now. Okay, anyways, well that was the first test. We'll get it fixed up here and we'll get it right in the next video. Uh, with some slots in here. I might even test it with this lid here if I can get this lid to fit on there. I'm not sure if it's going to be an exact fit. See those little slots? That's what lets the pressure not build up on the inside so much. And that's what happened in here. There's too much pressure on the inside and it's coming out the top. So let me stop this video for a second. I'll take it apart and show you how it's made. Be right back. Alright, so I just took it open. There's how much water's in there. I don't know what that means to you guys, but I don't have a measuring device down here, really, so I can't tell you how much it is. I don't know how much any of this stuff is. But it was a pretty good amount of money, water here. I guarantee I can make two cups of coffee out of it. Two small cups, not two large cups. I could actually drink out of this because I have that look guard on there right now. Let me go ahead and pour it 
in a cup here for you guys so you can see. There's one cup. Now we're not going to get that's more than eight ounces. It's more than 16 ounces, I think, but I'm not sure. We're going to do the next cup here just to see how much more is in there. There's about how much was in there. Now, granted, there's a bunch on the table right now because I didn't have a seal right. So that's about how much water we had in there. With all the stuff that spilled out, you might have got that one up a little bit higher, about halfway. So not two full cups of coffee, but definitely enough for one guy camping. And that's what this is really for. This is for one person camping. This is not really for two people. Uh, it's a one guy pot. That's why it's ultra light. It's simple like the Heineken pot was. Okay, how did I make this? Well, I made it just like I made my Heineken pots. I took a soda bottle bottom, and actually I'm using the uh, teas, the big tea bottles. Let me grab an Arkansas tea here so I can show you where I got it from exactly. Here's a big oh, Arizona tea, not Arkansas. There's the bottom I pull out right there. And I take that, and you can see that would fit right in there. Well, it'd come out of that way. So I file the bottom down, and I cut that out. I do it to two of them. The other one can be any kind of soda bottle. It doesn't have to be the big one. It can be the little one. It can be a little soda can. It can be anything. So I take that out, and I cut it down. Let me take this all apart real quick. Here. I got a messy water here, so I'm going to keep my carbon fill out of that mess. So I take that and cut it down. And then I take a piece of copper. And I measure out how long it needs to be. And what I need to do is I'll probably need to measure this for you guys to let you know what it needs to be. And I buy these O-rings. Let me tell you what O-rings they are. They work really well. I get them at Home Depot. You can get them wherever you want. That's the size I'm using. 9 16 OD, 5 16 ID, times 1 8 inch O-ring, a number 31 from... Danco? Danco. Part number 96745. Look at that. The copper I'm using is 3 8 cents, 3 8 inch. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Utility grade soft copper 3 8 inch OD. I got 20 feet of it. So the amount of feet really doesn't matter so much because. Anyway, so the outer diameter on this is 3 8 cents. That's the key. I drill a hole in here, in the bottom of this cup, in the bottom of the uh, pot, and in the bottom of the tea bottle thing, right in the center. And then I wedge the edge of that with a drill bit. I just kind of cut the edge of it out. That's where the hot water goes in, gives it the big area in here to fill in, and then it percolates up through the pipe. The trick here is, and I do not do this on my Heineken pots, and I think I may go back and switch and start doing it because this was this was really something I learned. Oops, got my hand on the can. This is something I just learned. Um, I did use a percolator from a coffee pot that I had, so, similar to this one here. It's uh, just another Goodwill find. I think I paid fifty cents for the pot, maybe a dollar, and it was a little blowing out. So what I had to do it was bigger than I needed. So what I had to do was I had to take the copper here. And drop a little piece of soda bottle top on there. And that's just another piece of soda bottle. I keep saying soda bottle. Soda can top on there. So I just took another one of those. Cut a piece out of it. And it goes right there. Now here's the trick. This is something I learned new. I'm going to pass this along to anybody who's done, seen any of my coffee pots. I took and I used a pipe cutter to cut this copper. And you got to go around a number of times and tighten up. Well, right there, I marked it with a marker where it needed to be. And then I took the pipe cutter. And I started to cut in. And I went around like two times and stopped. Now my O-ring slides down and I always know where it needs to be. And that's, some of, that's one of the hardest parts I found with my Heineken pot. I never know where to set that goofy O-ring in this one. I always lower it and raise it and lower it and raise it and try and get it right. And it takes me 10 minutes sometimes to get the O-ring in the right spot. And I've tried marking it with a marker, but the marker wears off. And you get all that marker in your coffee, so what the heck. But... Now, this is the way to go. I will be doing that on all of them. And the reason I do it like this, instead of using the original, which I have, the original metal pipe that comes with it, there's a reason I switch out. This right here, this little uh, wedge right here that is always in the middle on the coffee pots, holds the basket up. Sometimes the baskets are actually like bent into there. This one right here was bent in, that's why it's got such a big hole. 
So sometimes they're manufactured right into this pipe. If that's there, you cannot slide this all the way up and take it off. And if you want to break this all the way down, which you do, that's what makes the Heineken one so nice, you can't take it off the bottom because all you've done down here is you've flared this out. So you can't take it off the bottom. You've got to slide it up. So all these little pieces slide right up. Every one of those little pieces, all that, will slide right off the pipe. This pipe, then, is single. None of this has, this, you don't talk about it being folded down or anything like that. Then you can store all your pieces in something like this. A little dumb thing. Now, granted, those little pieces can store in there. Like the O-rings and this and this. This is not going to store in there. So, you have to find, you know, you have to put that inside your pot when you're going. And drop the dumb thing below it. But, there's nothing you can do about that. But it's a good way to keep all those little o-rings and all those little pieces from getting lost while you're camping. You don't want that. Because with this one you can't do that. You can't take it apart. For example, this one here, the bottom's permanent. It's a fix. It doesn't come apart. So I can't fold that down anywhere. I can't do anything with it. It has to stay inside of this big old pot here. Nothing I can do with it. It can't go anywhere else. But this comes off, but that other piece doesn't slide up or down. So, that's why I went with this style copper tube. I like that better. It can all come apart. Any part that breaks or has a problem can be replaced real simply. But, what I'm going for here is I'm trying to make something that would work with this pot. I'm going to take the uh, lip guard off so I can show you what that was real quick. There's the pot you get from Batch Stoves. I think he sells them for 22 bucks. There's the lid he sells. It's a nice pot. It holds 22 ounces. That's two ounces less than the Heineken pot, but does a very good job of replacing it because it's nice and sturdy. This is the lid that I found to fit it. It does a pretty darn good job of fitting it as a coffee pot lid does. This is the other lid I have. It fits it as well. So you can see there's a lot of lids out there that will fit. It doesn't have to be a perfect tight fit because it's not going to have enough pressure to push the whole lid up, most likely. So you just need to find something that fits it like that. Or, we might try and rebuild this one now that we know it's going to work. Cut the hole in there, take the percolator out of this, and put it in there. Or get ourselves one of these fits-all percolators that screws in from the top and bottom and locks into place. That may be the way to go too. So, I'll try something. I may go with the fits all because I like those. They're a little bit on the heavy side though. Anyways, thanks Sam for sending me the pot. I'll keep testing until I get it perfect. And Trailhound, you tell me which one you want. 1 through 13. And we'll make a trade. Deal? Let me know. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later. I know this has been a long video. Uh, that's all for now.